Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Father, we bless you. To you be all the glory. Someone is giving God quality thanks for his manifold grace in our midst, for his wisdom at work in this house, for his power at work in your life. Give him thanks for that which he will be doing tonight. Give him thanks. Give him thanks for victories that will be wrought on your behalf tonight. Give him thanks for testimonies that will be established tonight. Give him thanks for restorations, for healings. Give him thanks. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I am here tonight. Give me a destiny-defining encounter. Someone go ahead and pray. Outside, pray. All the overflows, make sure you are praying. Those following online, we are praying now. Give me a destiny-defining encounter. A destiny-defining encounter. A destiny-defining encounter. The Bible says, For everyone that asketh, receiveth. Everyone that asketh, receiveth. Destiny defining encounter. For in Jesus' matchless name we pray. Father, we are here tonight. We're here because we love you. We're here as proof that we believe that tonight will be a feast of fat things we're here because we know that you will visit us and exceed our expectations we pray tonight that there'll be the spirit of faith let it rise from among us we are ready to receive we are expectant and we know that we will not be disappointed to you be all the glory for in jesus name we pray god bless you please you may be seated Give Jesus a big hand clap whilst you sit. <laughs> Hallelujah. On behalf of Jesus, the head of the church, let me welcome everyone to a miracle service for this month of August. <laughs> clap like you're clapping over your testimony. <laughs> clap like you're rejoicing already in advance. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. Just a few salutations and we'll get straight to the word. I want to welcome everyone. We're a house of honor. And um, let me start with our online family. Let's give our online family a big God bless you. Thank you for all who are connecting. Our U.S. family, Canada, U.K., and um, every other expression, we thank you for connecting. Your lives will never be the same. Zaria is also connecting for this miracle service. And we know that the Lord will do you good in Jesus' name. I want to welcome every man, woman of God, everyone deserving of honor. This is a house of honor. We love you and we honor you. Thank you for making the time to worship with us tonight in Jesus' name. I again want to welcome our international guests. Thank you so much for traveling all the way. Let's give them a big God bless you one more time. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um, two very special guests de deserving of honor. I'll just run through that so that we'll honor them. First, we have in our midst here is Bishop Macanto of the Upper Room Churches in Yola. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much, a father in the faith. And um, it's not his first time here. We thank you for making the time to worship with us. 
And then we also have in our midst the Father in the land, also Archbishop John Praise. Uh, let's give him all the honor that is deserving. God bless you, sir. Presiding Archbishop over the Dominion Chapel International Churches and um, the Deputy National President of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. The Lord bless you, sir. We honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Um, now, ethically, being that he's coming in that capacity, um, please allow me to give him a minute just to bring greetings, um, just warm greetings, and uh, even if he's to say, God bless you, let's give him that honor in the capacity that he has come with. So please rise and join me as we welcome Archbishop John Praise so that he just brings us a word of greetings. Hallelujah. Is this the best that you can do? Praise the Lord. Come on, wave your hand and shout hallelujah. We honor God's servant, Apostle Joshua Selman, and this great work and great fellowship. This is Koinonia. All of us are part of it. Amen. Glory to God. And uh, just a joy to be here tonight and with my dear friend, Bishop Peter Macanto. Actually, he just called me yesterday and said he wants me to follow him. He said, oh. My schedule is very tight this evening. I said, okay. Uh, I've been planning to come. There was a time I had some guests from the U.S. And I was to come with them. Somehow I couldn't make it. But it's my joy to be here and to share in this great fellowship tonight. And to congratulate God's servant for the great work that is going on. We're proud of him. We love you. We're praying for you from strength to strength and from glory to glory. Just one word. Nehemiah 8 verse 10, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And then it says in Proverbs 24 verse 10, if your strength fails in the day of adversity, then your strength is small. So you need more strength, joy. More strength, greater joy. God bless you. Love you. Thank you. Please let's give Archbishop a big, big God bless you. Hallelujah. Keep clapping until he gets to his seat. Hallelujah. Thank you for taking the time to fellowship with us. Hallelujah. I understand in a few minutes you have to leave just to catch up with some engagements. And so please take our love to the family back. We honor you, sir. God bless you. Let's be seated. Thank you. Thank you. This is your house. Your home, we welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your home, we welcome you today. And I am your house, your home, we welcome you, Lord, I welcome you. This is your house. And your home. We welcome you. Lord, we welcome you. This is your house. Your home. We welcome you today. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord do us good tonight, in Jesus' name. All right, straight to the business of the night. Please be seated. My first assignment tonight is to define for us what a miracle service means in Koinonia, so that we are not at a loss as to what to expect tonight. I thought about this while preparing for tonight's service, that it was very important to define for us what a miracle service means in this house, because the needs of believers vary and it's important that we, um, we are not at a loss as to that word miracle. For the average person, when we talk about a miracle or a miracle service, we think a healing service. 
and while that is a major component as far as what we're doing is concerned it's not limited to bodily healing are we together a miracle in this sense is a definition of any and all forms of divine intervention any and all forms of divine intervention and so we have people who are not sick in their bodies but they are in very serious financial crisis to such people the miracle service for you will be a service where God answers and speaks to your financial issues you believe that say amen, amen. for someone you may not be sick in your body however it's evident that the devil has seemed to gain an advantage over your life oppressing you in various manners so your miracle service becomes for you a deliverance service for many others you may be in all kinds of trouble legal troubles and family troubles marriage troubles for you the miracle service becomes a restoration service and like the archbishop noticed while he was giving us his greetings and his uh, you know remarks there are people here who have lost joy you've lost fervor you've lost you know the joy that comes with life maybe for you your miracle service will be a restoration of your joy hallelujah the psalmist said cast me not away from your presence he says take not your spirit from me then he says restore unto me there is a joy that comes with salvation and if you lose that joy it is true that the potential for a harvest is lost and a broken spirit like the bible says can dry the bones i taught you here that you can have an infirmity from the spirit the bankruptcy of joy and it can translate to ill health unfortunately machines cannot diagnose this hallelujah are we learning now so a miracle service for the downtrodden is a breakthrough and restoration service a miracle service for the sick is a healing service where god is bringing vitality to your organs for someone you are here you may not even know the name of what is wrong with you quite honestly you are here hoping that god is able to give definition to what is wrong with you because you cannot treat what you can't diagnose the first thing a doctor does in an attempt to treat a patient is to diagnose the condition as best as he's able to do and sometimes diagnosing a condition can take a long time you'll be referred to one unit one hospital one specialist until they finally agree that this is wrong with you there are patients who have suffered today because prescriptions were given on account of a poor diagnosis and they began to take that prescription only to find out that it made the matter worse so there are people who are here it looks like what you have is delay but it's really not delay it looks like what you have is bad luck but it's really not bad luck i pray by the spirit of god that in the course of the service god will help you to really understand the root cause of what it is that is the foundation for this pain and that god will not only reveal it he will deal with it shout a believing amen, amen. hallelujah there are people who are here trusting God to receive all kinds of graces. When an individual does not thrive, it is because of bankruptcy on, of knowledge and bankruptcy of grace. And you need both. You need knowledge, the requisite knowledge it takes to excel, and then the engracing by the Spirit to defend that knowledge or that which you claim to know. And there are many people who have knowledge, but the grace component that brings validation to the things they claim to know is not there. So they propose a lot of things that are true without the grace to defend it. Are we together? Perhaps for such a person, this is an impartation service for you because God wants to add life to the things that you know so that you don't just say God heals, you can show that he heals. You don't just say God prospers, you can show that he prospers. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. The experience of the kingdom, you can taste and you can see. In the name of Jesus Christ. Have I prepared your heart enough? All right, so I wrote a few things here that I want to charge our hearts with and then we'll go straight um, to the ministration by the Spirit. Very important things. The first that I want us to know tonight is that every true miracle starts at the instance the Word of God comes forth. For many people, they think the miracle starts when people start falling, shouting, the gifts of the Spirit being made manifest. It's a very wrong orientation. 
every manifestation of the spirit starts at the instance of his word the moment the word of god begins to be brought forth then you can expect that miracles have begun so that you do not just wait until there is the charismatic manifestation of the gifts of the spirit in luke chapter 5 and verse 17 luke 5 17 so every miracle starts the instant the word of god is revealed the bible says and it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town in galilee and judea and jerusalem and whilst he taught the bible says the power of the lord was present to heal the moment he was teaching the power was present the moment the word of god came the power was present so every time the word of god comes forth the power of god is present evidently present to heal to deliver i have taught you here that the assignment of the anointing is to bring validation to the speakings of god that means if the word of god does not go forth the anointing has no assignment the singular business of the assignment is to of the anointing is to bring validation to the speakings of god hallelujah the proper order is that the word of God comes forth and then his power comes to back and bring validation to his speakings. So number one, you have to know that it is at the instance of the word of God that miracles begin. Not just at the instance of the prophetic and you know ministrations of all sorts as important as they are. The correct protocol is that all those gifts of the spirit follow the word. When the word comes, you can be sure that the power of God is present. Hallelujah. In Psalm 107 and verse 20, popular scripture, the Bible says he sent forth his word. It never said he sent forth his power. He sent forth his word and that word empowered, healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Now that the word of God is coming from this altar, you can be sure that the power of God to heal, the power of God to restore, the power of God to redeem, to save, even to the uttermost, the power of God to restore, the power of God to bring guidance and direction, the power of God that imparts favor and all graces upon you is present here. And I'm praying for you that he will not only be present, he will be active in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, very quickly, this is a reminder and the Spirit of God impressed it upon my heart to still bring it forth today that most requests and desires are growth dependent. Write that down, please. Don't assume you've heard it. Write it down. Most requests and desires are growth dependent. What does that mean? It then means that most of the things we call prayer requests most of the things we are hoping God will do as request, they were designed to answer to growth, to answer to maturity. Hallelujah. There is a version of you that certain levels of breakthrough are looking for. There is a version of you that certain levels of growth, there is a version of you that prophecy is looking for to be made manifest. That if believers will contend for growth, it is a better deal as far as receiving from God is concerned. So most people have, you know, a long list of requests, but that most of those answers were designed to come naturally in the presence of growth. Are we together? So say for instance, a pastor who is praying for say a thousand or five thousand or ten thousand membership, if you do not grow, you see, God will love you too much to answer that kind of prayer because that prayer will end up being a curse. The, your bankruptcy of growth will make that breakthrough look like a curse. And so God will rather suspend that answer until you grow. You will grow to a point that you will not even be doing the asking. Your growth itself is a prayer warrior. It will attract certain answers from the Spirit to your life. Are we learning now? Galatians 4 and verse 1, an heir, the Bible says, for as long as that heir is a child, he differeth nothing from a servant, even though by inheritance he is Lord of all. That means that a child, an heir, 
There are things that are supposed to be results and possibilities in his life, but for as long as he's a child, and the characteristic feature of a child is bankruptcy of knowledge, not just size, bankruptcy of knowledge. There are many people who can be taller than their parents, yet their children. Proof, allow them speak. The moment they open their mouth, you immediately feel embarrassed for overrating their age. And he said, no, you sound like a teenager. He says, I'm just 13. He said, oh, I see. You are a healthy 13-year-old child, but you are certainly a 13-year-old child. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I understood like a child. Are we together? I thought like a child. He says, now that I am a man, I lay aside these childish things. Many believers have not contended for growth. That is the reason why they keep recycling prayer requests. Month after month, year after year, the prayer requests do not seem to be answered. And it's not because the power of God is not able to answer. God vets the state of people before allowing certain results to come to them. God is not a herbalist or an errand boy who will answer anything provided you say in Jesus name there are rules of engagement just because you committed that desire in prayer does not guarantee that it must be answered are we together yeah so many of the requests in in all honesty and that includes the request that many of us have written right now my job is to pray for you and I'll do that with all my heart but I'm telling you by the Spirit of God that most of the things we expect to work in our lives were supposed to be the natural consequence of growth. There are certain levels of increase in your finances that will not just respond to desire, they will respond to growth. I have taught you here that success is not what you look for. You attract it by who you are becoming. Your growth has magnetic properties it is able to attract certain possibilities to your life so that what was meant to be a blessing does not become a curse if you give a five-year-old child the key to your suv or a 10-year-old child and allow him to just explore and play with things by the time that child dies the government can arrest you and jail you as a parent am i right on that because they say you, as, you should know that at that age, that child should not be able to drive that. There is an age. So even though the car is for the child, you will be patient regardless how the child cries. And sometimes as a child, he may not understand what is responsible for this cruelty. You already said it's my car. In fact, you bought it in my name. And the father would have to be patient until the day he gets to 18. And then he hands it over to him. And he says, now you take responsibility. If you hit someone, you go to jail by yourself. You are adult enough to take responsibility. That's how it is in the spirit. I'm praying for you that the kind of growth that needs to happen in your life to reduce this prayer request that you have written, the kind of growth that needs to happen in your ministry, in your organization, in your business, in your family. I'm praying for you that the God of all grace will hasten that process of growth shout a believing amen that the god of all grace will hasten that process in jesus name we pray amen growth has an implication in the life of every believer and the reason why prayer requests continue to pile up being unanswered it may not necessarily be as a result of demonic attacks and it may not necessarily be that you are praying amiss. It's just that the version of you, you are asking those requests to come to, they were not designed to come to that version of you until you contend for transformation. There is a version of you the anointing cannot come upon. The, the, the anointing will not come upon a version that is still mediocre, bankrupt of spiritual knowledge. Hallelujah. Is someone learning number three the third thing I want you to learn I hope we're learning now number one I taught you that the Word of God miracles begin at the instance of the word not the instance of power the instance of the word the Word of God is a conveyor of his power you can have power without the word for instance witchcraft but you cannot have authentic manifestation of God's power outside of his word his word always precedes his power are we together number two that most requests and desires are growth dependent 
So if most believers will submit themselves methodically to the processes that lead to spiritual and intellectual growth, they will find out that certain things they today call prayer requests will naturally gravitate towards their space. Number three, I wrote here that spirit manifestations, conditions and situations depend on certain belief systems to find expression in the life of any individual. I'll say that and then I'll explain. Spirit manifestations of all kinds, whether the Holy Spirit, demon spirits, conditions and situations all depend on certain mindsets or certain belief systems to find expression in the life of any individual. I have taught you here, but let me remind you that nothing works in your life automatically. There is a certain mindset requirement. Please listen. There is a certain belief system requirement that must come in partnership with spirits, that must come in partnership with conditions to allow for their manifestations in your life. It doesn't matter how powerful the cause is. It doesn't matter how powerful the blessing is. It demands that there is a certain mindset. I wrote something here. Your belief system is your contribution to your success or your failure. Your belief system is what you bring as a contribution to your being successful or to your failing. Your belief system is your contribution. That means if you fail while you are blaming the devil, make sure a portion of that blame goes to you. Because although that cause worked, I am teaching you that that cause depended on a certain manifestation. Are we together? Praise God. So your system is your contribution to your success or your failure. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. Look at me. I want you to give yourself a renewed orientation. Causes do not just work. Blessings do not just work. Altars do not just work. It doesn't matter the kind of spirit. It doesn't matter the kind of attack. You believe me, there is a certain mindset if you do not have, a cause cannot work. It doesn't matter the enchantment. The enchantment wait for a particular belief system. The blessing waits for a particular belief system. It doesn't matter what prophetic word came upon you. They are dependent on a certain belief system. And if they don't find it, it will not work. Mm. Mm. are we learning so when the devil makes it look like he can veto into your life and make anything happen he's saying that because already he has built a stronghold around your belief system are we together now for instance a stronghold of fear for instance a stronghold of irresponsibility Generational causes are enhanced by generational belief systems. The devil affected your grandfather because he made him believe a certain thing. And if he's to perpetuate that cause, the first thing he perpetuates is that mindset. The person in that family who has a different mind is the person who that cause will stop at. Believe me when I tell you this. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel has come to you, oh, Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel has come to you, his Israel. Don't just say courses cannot work. 
verify that the mindset that made them walk is not in your life otherwise it will work herein lies the arrogance of Christians without knowledge they say God forbid no it does not work with sentiments your belief system is your contribution to your failure or your contribution to your success no matter what kind of oil is laid on you if certain belief systems do not change you only gave the devil a little break sabbatical he's coming back that is the reason why certain spirits leave certain individuals with joy because they know after service they are waiting for you at the corridor of your belief system they will be back listen to my message complete deliverance listen to that message it's a classic that will change your life i teach you how to have complete deliverance that number one casting out the spirit influences is important but that is not enough you must submit to the transforming power of the word deliverance through transformation and then number three is called the discipline of conformity using your own will to partner with God is the reason why it looks like certain situations never change I have always known that mindsets are important but I've not I didn't realize early the extent of importance that belief systems play it doesn't matter who chants what in front of you there is a belief system if it does not find it will not work believe me it doesn't matter who takes your name to what shrine what it doesn't matter there is a way if you believe or if you do not believe it will determine the outcomes of your life there are people today if every demon and every sorcerer is chained on earth they will still fail because their belief system makes it unscriptural for them to succeed someone learning your belief system do not forget this is your miracle happening right now your belief system is your contribution to your failure or your contribution to your success as a man of God if you fail in life and ministry credit it largely to your belief system there is an understanding there is an orientation or lack of it that has allowed for that demonic partnership conditions look for mindsets spirits look for mindsets even the Holy Spirit looks for mindsets who is God speaking to tonight there are levels of the anointing you cannot carry until you sustain certain belief systems if you do not have a mindset that honors increase the anointing for increase can be on your head and remain quiet for 30 years it cannot work because the mindset that must partner with that anointing is not there there are people who have received the anointing for wealth and abundance but their mindset has interpreted wealth and abundance as carnal and unscriptural it does not matter what kind of prayer you pray it does not matter what kind of business they do i tell you they will fail eventually they will fail it's a law but show me a man who pays the price to build a belief system that is consistent with the Word of God you may be a pastor over 10 people over 50 people but you believe that your increase in ministry is important for the kingdom that the business of salvation is the business of numbers the business of territorial impact is the business of numbers when you begin to have that mindset then God can add daily as many as should be saved because your mindset will not reject that are we together God cannot anoint you with grace to represent his purposes transcontinentally when you still feel bad about yourself and you call yourself a non-entity either because of the color of your skin or your sociological context there has to be a re-engineering that happens in your spirit that by the word of God you understand that we have equal value before God that the same Lord is rich unto all them that call upon him and that he's no respecter of persons it doesn't matter what lowly estate you came from that something can happen within your spirit for God's sake and exalt you above the nations of the earth the day you believe that the grace called hear ye him that grace can come upon you 
if you do not believe that you cannot serve the purposes of God beyond certain levels who is learning tonight if you do not believe that God can anoint you and make you a channel of blessing it doesn't matter how many bottles of oil are poured on you your mindset closes the gate for the anointing to function because you have not yet learned that Genesis 12 and verse 3 can be a reality in the life of a man that in thee all the families of the earth can be blessed it's an indoctrination you must allow happen to you that you are not weak you are not a cause you are not a liability you are not a number that is being added to men you matter you count as far as God's program is concerned the day that thing enters your spirit not from a carnal standpoint that you are that valuable a tool as far as God's program is concerned is someone understanding this So when you believe that it doesn't matter what family you came from, grandfather, forefathers, whatever it is, they killed, they did whatever, yes, that is true. But the day you understand the mercy of God and what the mercy of God is able to do, when those spirits come as usual, they will find out another reconfiguration within the solical realm. There is another construction this is the assignment of the teaching priest. It should not just inform you, but it should reconfigure your mind. This is what the Bible calls renewal. Transformation through renewal. Transformation through renewal. It says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Jesus said, don't mind Nathaniel. He's telling the truth. If I do not contend for transformation, I will be like Samson. Samson the Nazarene. They didn't have longevity of impact. It was not a lie. But Jesus said, he that cometh from above <laughs> is above all, above all. You came from above through Lagos, above through Adamawa, above through Abuja. You didn't come from Abuja, you came from above. You only passed to have a material frame through your place. If you have this mindset that you come from above, you come from above, you come from above, he that cometh from above is above all that means above the limitations that come with your territory don't tell me people don't live long you may not be lying but you are lying with respect to my reality you are lying because my reality has changed the equation something I have refused to believe has changed the equation something I have insisted on believing has changed the equation so it becomes true until it comes around my neighborhood it is true that people do not make it but be careful what you are saying when you are coming to the corridor of my life because I define the rules with God that function within my domain it is me and God that are responsible for my outcomes do you believe this there are things I believe about myself with respect to God and what he's done in my life I will never stop believing it there are things I will never believe about myself no it's not pride, it's the truth. Many of us have allowed society to define the things that you believe. And unknown to you is a scheming of hell to keep you in a certain belief system so that you render the word of God of none effect. Doesn't matter what you listen. Oh, that's true, but it does not change. Hallelujah. As a man of God, there are things I believe. I believe that my only limitation in life is the voice of God and process that's it these are the only limits I see in my life the voice of God and process I am victorious I have overcome I am victorious I have Overcome, I am victorious. I have overcome. I am victorious. I am overcome. When I read in my Bible that I and the children the Lord has given me. 
they are for signs and wonders I believed it when I read in my Bible that I'll be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon me and overtake me I believed it when I read in my Bible that no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper and that every tongue that rises up against me will fall in judgment I believed it the Bible says Gentiles will come to my light it says they are kings to the brightness of my rising it says for my shame I will sleep double is that in your Bible I'm describing for you the truths that make up my belief belief system yes sir it matters what you believe it matters who you allow to construct your belief listen to me I'm saying it again and please receive it as a deliverance that it does not matter what dream you saw apostle I saw myself in a grave that is absolute nonsense if your mindset agrees with that dream get ready to be in the grave but provided your mindset rejects that dream your praying in tongues is your secondary approach your primary resistance is your mindset not the prayer your mindset not the prayer your mindset you can pray out of fear you are still defeated Are we together? Apostle, I'm beginning to see the signs that happen to all the ladies in our family. If you generalize yourself that much, save Johnny. But as for some of us, in the name of Jesus Christ, we the Bible says we have been called out of every tribe, every tongue, every nation. The limitations that come with territory that they do not have power over you. This is not Pentecostal gibberish. This is the integrity of the world. Please sit down. Your belief system is your contribution to your failure or your contribution to your success. You can believe as a woman, my womb will never carry an arm robber. No, sir. No, no. My womb will never carry an arm robber. And you agree with God. Doesn't matter how stubborn the child is while you are making that confession. Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. Say so. Apostle, so many people hate me. There's none of your business with their hatred. Their hatred has no power over you until it partners with a mindset that is already defeated. It says he shall prepare a table for you, not in the presence of your friends. So don't be surprised that there are enemies around. They, it, it doesn't affect you at all. You are just giving flimsy excuses. The presence of enemies, I tell you, has no effect on your progress. Don't give them that kind of power. Are we learning? That Gentiles shall come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. Apostle, but while I'm saying this, I'm still in one small room. Whatever you call it, that is what it becomes. If you call it one small room to mean this is all I can afford, no. This is what this season has brought me. And I see it as a place for training. I see it as a place for discipline. Are we together? I do not have a job. Where are the jobless people and you stand up? I will never respond to such an insultive statement. That I don't have a job and being jobless are two different things. I don't have a job means there is a lot going on. I am jobless means I even lack the capacity to make progress. What you call yourself matters. Sometimes we embrace all this rubbish that society brings and some of you, you, you browse yourself to defeat. You become a lot more foolish in the evening than you were in the morning when you woke up. Thanks to the mismanagement of social media. Any failure just comes and wants to mentor you without results in their own lives. They teach you all kinds of nonsense and they say, I'm saying my mind. And you receive that mind and they are right. They are saying their mind. They are not saying the truth. They are saying their mind. You receive their mind, it becomes your truth. Is someone learning? Please do not forget this teaching tonight. Your mindset and your belief system is your contribution. 
next time you are talking about the story of your success or the story of your failure if you blame uncle parents government nigeria and don't mention yourself if i'm there i will tell you you lied add one more space let me see how you were thinking in the midst of those challenges let me see what you believed in the midst of the ill speakings and the nay speakings that is your own contribution to that story lay your hands on your head and declare that in the name of jesus i contend for transformation someone is praying i contend for transformation by the power of the holy spirit i contend for transformation I contend for transformation in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Your belief system. So when you say a powerful man of God, this is what you are saying. A powerful God showing mercy over an ordinary man who chose to cooperate with that power using a superior mindset. That's what you just described. A successful businessman does not mean a lucky businessman. A businessman helped by God, albeit in partnership, he's, he's contending for superior knowledge is his contribution. Every time you fail to be transformed, you are saying, God, forget about my success. I'm not interested. Don't mind what I wrote. Don't mind what I'm saying. Apostle boy, I saw a vision you will die tomorrow. You better close that grave. Go back to the dream and close that grave. You know the scriptures that will stand on that grave? You have no idea. And, and I'm not being arrogant. It is the truth. Where did you keep in thee shall all the families be blessed? Where did you keep honor your father and your mother and the Lord that your days may be long? Where did you keep I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing? Possible, but nobody wants to show me kindness this Nigeria is a wicked place it's a lie I have taught you here it's impossible for everybody to hate you even Satan is not hated by everybody I told you that isn't it terrorists have wives there are women that know that a man is a terrorist and he took her to his parents as a terrorist and he said, are you willing to spend the rest of your life with this arm robber she said yes everybody cannot hate you no sir you don't need everybody. You need the right people. Just one person. One. 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 One destiny helper. Sent by God. One lifter. Sent by God. One endorser. Sent by God. One counselor. Sent by God. You are looking for a to lift you. Then does God take the glory? No, sir. One. 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 One man helped Jesus. Redemption was complete. One man helped. Listen, it's not a crowd when it has to do with helping men. God does not use a crowd. One. One encounter. May you find that one man tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I told you already, let me inform you. When you are praying for helpers, don't choose those you want to be helpers. Your choices will be in the flesh and you will largely be out of the will of God. Allow God to choose the human personalities that he will use to birth prophecy. Chances are excellent that if you are to choose, you will rate by the flesh. There is an uncle in Lagos. He has enough money to give me a house. Father, wake him up. And God says, no, I don't work like that. Because lack of discernment can make your prayer look like divination where you are harassing someone's peace he fasted to pray for sleep see it now there are many believers that pray like diviners because they do not know how to pray accurately in the will of god but when you let god choose the people he will bring a stranger that you do not know who will come from america to nigeria and say i don't even know why i came god asked me to come and god will tell him come for koinonia sit at my left sit at the right and he will suddenly turn to you and say so you are the reason why i came god for you is someone learning now please sit down this is already your miracle service oh I hope you are learning. 
so that you will use your belief system and reject certain things when you say this cause dies from my life you are not just saying that spirit leave the spirit part to me don't worry this is my job leave that one huh leave that one but your own assignment is to say the mindset that my great-grandfather had that even though he was a sincere man he still died poor the other one died poor the other one you understand that mindset Lord Jesus show me mercy by your word and let that mindset be driven far from my life I tell you even if the spirit comes to stand Satan cometh to me is it in your Bible Jesus was speaking and does not find anything that means when he comes he looks for what looks like him that becomes his connection point now I want to just run through a list very quickly the Lord gave me this and insisted that I drum it the character traits that are directly connected to a victorious life I just want to run through that list why the Lord put this in my heart honestly I couldn't sleep the Lord kept pounding it he said you must teach the people this you must tell it to them that for most of them they are not able to walk in victory because this essential character traits there are certain character traits many of them but five I've written and I'll just run through it I'm not teaching it's a charge that I'm giving tonight I give you a guarantee anyone who lacks this character traits you have signed up for failure forever I don't care what else happens in your life literally walking in victory depends on having these character traits among many other bodies of knowledge are you ready now I will run through the list very quickly as the Spirit of God impressed upon my heart the character traits directly connected to victorious living number one gratitude you are already a failure on his way to happen if you do not embrace gratitude as a character trait ungrateful people never increase ungrateful people never remain gratitude Psalm 92 1 and 2 let's hurry up media gratitude the first character trait that the Holy Spirit is drumming in our hearts tonight you want to excel you want to partner with the anointing God has released for this miracle service you must realize that gratitude is an irrefutable secret to your becoming someone say gratitude shout it one more time say gratitude Psalm 92 please from verse 1 to 2 it is a good thing the Bible says a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto his name almost high verse 2 it says to show forth your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night it is a good thing first Thessalonians 5 16 to 18 the verse of emphasis is verse 18 but contextually the Bible says rejoice ever more uh-huh and then it says pray without ceasing verse 17 I like verse 18 in everything how many things in everything it says give thanks for this is the will of God the condition is not the will of God the attitude of thanksgiving in the midst of the condition is what is the will of God concerning you if you see pain give thanks when you don't understand where you are going give thanks confusion in your home give thanks bad result in school give thanks giving thanks does not mean you accept what is negative you are thanking God because he is the reason why it was not worse and it is a system that transforms pain to glory give thanks give thanks give thanks give thanks that you, show me a man who desires to live a life of victory and excellence in this kingdom and in destiny if that man does not have the character trait of consistent thanksgiving towards God and towards men I have taught you that gratitude is a multiplier it recycles favorable seasons in your life when you learn to say thank you to God as well as thank you to men you recycle their benevolence again and I've taught you that when you are giving thanks you must express it to match the sacrifice that was communicated to you can I recap on that teaching I taught you that if I give you hundred naira and you say thanks remember if I give you one thousand and you say thanks 
If I give you 100,000 and you say thanks, if I give you 1 million and you say thanks, you are not wise because it's not the same sacrifice that brought those amounts. Your thanksgiving must match the sacrifice communicated to you. This is why some of you have closed several doors in your life. Are we together? Yeah. Someone buys a house for you, thanks. Gives you 100 Naira recharge card, thanks. Leads you to Jesus Christ, thanks. Delivers you from evil spirits. Thanks. What then? At what point are you going to say thank you generously and lavishly? You see how people behave? They spend 10 page text messages explaining their troubles. Please now help me. Please now give me admission. And the person finally gives them admission. And after three days, they send a one word text. Thanks. And the person says, Mark this number never give this person help again yes sir yes sir i hope you are not just laughing gratitude is a multiplier and it's a recycler of favorable seasons someone say thank you jesus one more time shout it say thank you jesus very powerful Learn to be thankful. Minimize complaint. If not, avoid it totally. God, you gave me tea. Where is the bread? Say thank you for the tea first. Have you finished taking the tea and you did not find bread there? Maybe bread is on its way coming. You stop it from arriving because of ingratitude. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. I don't have all my bills paid, but thank you that I still have the sanity of mind to come to church. Thank you because I'm not in jail, even though I'm owing one year's rent. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't have a job yet, but my mental health is correct. Thank you, Jesus. Only people whose minds are sound walk. All the people whose minds are not well, they are incarcerated somewhere. Thank him for help. Find a reason. There has to be God in that equation, no matter the pain. One more time, say thank you, Jesus. Oh, apostle, you don't know how much money I lost, but you are still alive. That means you can gain it again. Are we together now? The one who had billions in his account but did not wake up this morning, it's over. Thank you, Jesus. Number two, very quickly. The second character trait connected to victorious living, are you learning? It's called honor. Honor. Closely connected to gratitude. Honor. There is no other force I know that shuts the door of destiny like dishonor. Dishonor is a vicious, it's a cancer that if you ever allow get into your destiny, it will shut any door at all. Honor. Everybody say honor. Honor is defined as the recognition, the celebrating, and the rewarding of men for their unique contribution to your life. The designing, the celebrating, and the rewarding. When the fathers of faith came here, we took our time to honor them and then to continue. Why do you do that? Because it is a protocol to greatness. Never get too big to honor those deserving of honor. There's one reason if I'm to summarize failure, why people fail. Dishonor to God, dishonor to man, dishonor to systems. Hallelujah. That, that faculty of discerning celebrating and rewarding men for their unique contribution is a priceless gift honor you can earn a living practicing honor you literally can use honor as a stream of income that when people are asking you what do you do for a living someone says i'm into real estate another person says i'm into tech you can say i practice honor for a living and only a fool will laugh at you because honor is a vicious door opener it can open any door Honor can make men like you. And when they like you, whatever they carry becomes yours. Are we together now? Practice honor. 
practice honor take an inventory of those who have made contributions in your life and appreciate them when you see greatness don't ignore it practice honor preachers practice honor businessmen practice honor are you learning tonight and I will not be silent. I will always worship you as long as as long as powerful key to maintaining relationships is to use the combo of gratitude and honor I told you every time you cannot bring value to any relationship bring honor and gratitude you have equalized that relationship it doesn't matter how great the person is and how low you are the moment you bring gratitude and you bring honor no matter how great your contribution is, your honor and gratitude exalts you to a point that you will look like colleagues. Go and try it and come and tell me thank you. Are we together? There are times where certain relationships without gratitude and honor will look unequally yoked because there is nothing you can give that person. He's richer than you, wiser than you, better than you, older than you, more experienced than you. He can jail you, you cannot jail him. He knows God more than you. You look at the relationship and it's as if you're a parasite. Balance it by using honor and gratitude. You will find out that you will never be a non-entity again in that relationship use it for your superiors in office use it for any man of God you truly love and honor and you watch what happens honor gratitude but you see this honor is like a garment of shame it reduces the value of anything this honor reduces the value of anything this honor reduces the value of a person reduces the value of an organization reduces the value of a church reduces the value of a vision dishonor is a depleter it reduces anything number three koinonia is quiet i want to believe you are repenting because some of you are saying ah so this word has recycled this pain that even brought me here this night thank god for the miracle service so you repent don't send anything to anybody and say we are like that in our family we say our mind where has it taken you are you not seeing that you are still begging huh? this saying your mind mentality change it all people have done these things and suffered for nothing the one who is in need is the one who behaves well you cannot want success to come to you at your own terms no honor number three the third character trait that is directly connected to victorious living koinonia are you learning diligence diligence show me a man who intends to be successful god's way to be victorious god's way and ignores the law of diligence i show you one who is joking with his destiny diligence diligence proverbs 20 and verse 4 let's hurry up Proverbs 20 and verse 4. The sluggard, give us amplified. Is it possible? The sluggard will not plow. Okay, well, the same thing it says. The sluggard does not plow when winter sets in. Therefore, he begs in harvest and has nothing. NIV, I believe, will give a better expression. I just wanted another expression for the word sluggard. You see, all of them use sluggard. You see how serious it is. A sluggard is a lazy person. Lazy person. That's right. NLT. Thank God for these versions. Those too lazy to plow in the right season will have no food at the harvest. Period. What don't you understand about this scripture? It's as clear as it is. Let me read it one more time. Those too lazy to plow in the right season. So seasons matter will have no food 
at the harvest. Are we together? There are many believers who are lazy. There are many believers spiritually lazy, intellectually lazy, and all forms of laziness. They combine it in their lives and wonder why they are not going forward. In the name of Jesus tonight, I come by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cast out of your life every spirit of laziness. I cast out of your life every spirit of laziness. As a man of God, when you are lazy, be sure that be ready for empty pews. God will honor you to the degree, not just of his mercy and faithfulness, but the degree of your own diligence too. Your own diligence too. Your own diligence too. Apostle, I want to be very wealthy. You think wealthy people just cross their legs and sleep? Run away from that lie you see on the internet. They are diligent people who work day and night. Day and night. Day and night. As others are snoring, they are awake. Even the keeper of Israel does not sleep or slumber. No wonder he is the king of kings. Satan who goes about like a roaring lion. Huh? You, you see both Satan and, and, and Jesus, they all agree that laziness is not good. So which side are you if you are lazy? Because whether it's Satan you want to serve or Jesus you want to serve, none of them will accept laziness. I want to join your cult. You will still need hard work. I want to be part of Jesus' camp. I will, you will still... Laziness is one thing that both God and Satan agree on that you will be a defeated person with it. Laziness. The time to wake up and read, you wake up and read. The time to wake up and pray, you wake up and pray. The time to put your life in order, you put your life in order. Laziness. Are we together? One enemy of laziness or one enhancer to laziness is called procrastination. One day I will do it. One day go better. Don't worry. Uh, I, I'm, I'm planning about it. One day, one day. May that day be today for someone. One day I'll be serious with God. Let that day be today. One day I'll be serious with my destiny. Let that day be today. In the name of Jesus Christ. You can make that one day your today. Where you insist that from this day, things must change in my life. From this day, wrong relationships be on your way. From this day, prayerlessness be on your way. From this day, laxity spiritually be on your way. Diligence is a powerful principle. Let's hurry up. I'll give you two more and then we're done. Who is ready for number four? The fourth character trait directly connected to victorious living is called the practice of forgiveness. Colossians 3 13 forgiveness apostle don't talk about this one then you will go to hell because the Bible I don't mean an insult you literally will go to hell because the Bible says if you do not forgive men their sins neither with your own father forgive you your own sins there are people this over my dead body mentality I pray that it will die tonight it's painful but shout amen, amen. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 13 the practice of forgiveness forbearing one another and forgiving one another i've taught you here that they mean two different things remember the word forbear means tolerate tolerate means accommodate that weakness because it will happen again and again and again for instance a noisy person does not need forgiveness if you tell a noisy person keep quiet you don't say i forgive you you say i tolerate you because in five minutes you will resume what the person needs is not forgiveness what the person needs is Forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Do you know, this thing called offense and unforgiveness is a terrible cancer. It stops the anointing from flowing. It stops victory from manifesting. Are we together? I'm not a medical doctor, and this is not a medical advice, but I know that offense can multiply you and make you age you can be 30 years and people would think you lied with your age they'll say your true age is 50 because offense would have added 20 years to your face yes sir there are people like that 
How old are you? 25. No, you have to be, you, you can't be 25 years. Are you my father? Are you my mother? This is my age. He said, no. Because you wrinkle your face, you frown your face. Good morning. What is good about the morning? You see people behave like that? Okay, happy Sunday. What is good about the Sunday? Joy. The antidote to offense. Joy. Let it flow like a river. That all this bad, this list of people you have in your, there's what they used to call black book. Remember that black book talk? You have a list of people you write over my dead body over my dead body and before you sleep you say God have mercy on me let me wake up in peace forgive me all my sins and then God forgives you and you wake up and continue your black your, your black list it's amazing the things that believers do we go and beg God oh say forgive me and then you now turn and you are doing your own again someone shout I forgive don't tell me who you are forgiving just say I forgive sometimes it can be yourself did you hear what I said? Sometimes it can be yourself. For the many years of foolishness, rejecting God when the gospel came, I forgive. The many years of prayerlessness that empowered causes to walk against your life and delay your progress, I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. Nobody lives an excelling life if you are not prepared to practice forgiveness. Forgiveness is predicated upon the humanity of man, that the best of all men is human. Your spouse, human. Are we together now? Pastor, human. Members, human. Business person, human. And that eventually, one day, at one point or the other, knowingly or unknowingly, intentionally or otherwise, the humanity of men will find expression. And it may be at that moment a disadvantage to you. Maybe in anger. Maybe whatever it is. So you make up your mind. Do you know that forgiving is one of the highest ways to give? We talk about giving and we limit it to money. Forgiveness is a kind of giving. It's a giving that factors in the fact that people can fall short of your standard and you already prepare your heart. Forgiveness is a kind of giving. Don't say you are a giver to mean you drop naira and dollars alone. You are not an authentic giver because the greatest giver did not just give things. He gave his life and he did that forgiving us. So if we are to model giving from Jesus, your giving cannot be limited to money alone or things alone or impartation alone. You must grant pardon to people, sometimes undeserving people. But let me put a balance very quickly and I've taught you here that the value of forgiveness is when it comes after repentance. Write that down so that you don't allow the devil confuse you through this charge. Without repentance, forgiveness will be useless. Let me say that again. Without repentance, forgiveness will be useless. The real value of forgiveness is when there is repentance, a change of heart. Hallelujah. Is someone learning? The real value of forgiveness is when there is repentance. The prodigal son's father forgave him because the gentleman was willing to repent and he got up and began to take actions to honor his repentance. How about people who perpetually remain unrepentant? There is what the Bible says to do with them. I will tell you, Romans, I believe 16, it says to mark and avoid. Give it to us, please. Romans chapter 16. Uh, I'm trying to look for the scripture now. Help me, Holy Spirit. That should be 16, 17, 18. Please give it to us. Beautiful. Romans chapter 16. The Bible recommends for people who are perpetually unrepentant. It says to mark them and to avoid them. Mark them and to avoid them. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. And it says to do what? Avoid them. Verse 18. Does it have anything to teach us? Yeah. For they are that, they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. 
and by good words and fair speeches now this is where NIV helps us give us NIV please give us NIV media for such people are not serving our Lord Jesus Christ but their own appetite it says by smooth talk and flattery they deceive the minds of naive people there are people like that forgiveness is wonderful but don't keep destroyers in your space because Joshua Selman says forgive there is wisdom that guides forgiveness when people constitute a nuisance to your progress mark them and avoid them this is what the Bible teaches mark them and avoid them because it is only when you are alive that you can forgive there are times that the cancer that is around you may not even leave you to be alive are we together now the value of forgiveness is when there is repentance when there is repentance when there is repentance but when there is perpetual unrepentance the recommendation from scripture is to mark to mark means to take note as touching the consistency of this evil behavior and it says to avoid you avoid for your own good who is learning mark and avoid let me give you the final trait are you ready for number five so number one is gratitude number two is honor number three is diligence four is forgiveness number five humility humility you want to succeed pride is another cancer James 4 6 humility God resisted the proud God resisted the proud God resisted the proud. You know what that means? The anointing cannot fight for you when God is resisting you because the anointing only resists what is antichrist. So when God is resisting you, no amount of prayer except the prayer of mercy can bail you out. He giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud. The proud man of God, the proud businessman, the proud academician, are we together? The proud spouse, the proud child. God resisted the proud anyone, but he giveth grace to the humble. The humble man of God will find more grace. The humble businessman will find more grace. The humble politician will find more grace. The humble technocrat will find more grace. I can tell you, one thing that secures disfavor for you with both God and men is pride. Fight pride. Proverbs 16, 18. Fight pride. Fight it with all you've got. Let's read together Koinonia. One loud concert. Ready? One to go. Pride goes before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. One more time, please. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit. That means pride is prophetic. Every time you see pride around you, it is prophesying to you. That you are not going to last there something is about to come that will be tragic and will happen to you do you know i submit to you one of my major prayer points i don't think i'll ever remove that prayer point from my list is this prayer of humility as you rise in life and in ministry and as god continues to show you mercy you will see that this prayer of humility is a matured believer's prayer are we together go back and pray as God keeps lifting you men can clap you to your grave you can even from the abundance of the results that happen in your life you can indoctrinate yourself and exalt yourself more highly than is meet but let me encourage someone maybe this is the one trait you are missing you are not wanting in the area of diligence maybe you are not even wanting in the area of um, for unforgiveness but this pride is something you met everyone around your life was arrogant your mentors arrogant mentees arrogant you yourself arrogant you can change you can change you can change many men of god have been destroyed as a result of pride than demonic attack many businessmen have been destroyed because of pride than any demonic attack i can tell you firsthand by the integrity of scripture and by experience that pride is a killer i have seen many people in my life who were haughty today they are nowhere to write to write home about they faded like a leaf in ministry in business 
there were merchants, champions, millionaires, billionaires who decided to act in pride and today they've been reduced to ashes. I refer you to my teaching, the lifting power of true humility. There is false humility, but there is true humility. True humility is not the refusal to acknowledge the good that God has done in your life. True humility is acknowledging that without God and outside of God, you are nothing. You are nothing. Ah, you are nothing. I'm preaching to myself as I'm standing here. You are nothing oh, without God. Ebenezer, it is God that lifts men. Never get carried away by any kind of lifting God brings in your life. Ministerial exploits, are we together? Finances, some, you know, money has started coming in, some, something significant. And you know, sometimes people who need you will praise you in such a way that you become deaf to the voice of God. You will not know when you have gone out of the zone of humility. Every time pride comes and you don't deal with it, if God loves you, I'm telling you how he deals with you. He will allow a system to touch you that will remind you. If you are discerning, you will know that it's not the devil fighting me. You will go back quickly for a retreat and say, God, before I embarrass myself, what have I done wrong? And God will say, you started taking my place. And this embarrassment is a sign of my mercy to bring you back before the devil strikes you and makes you a casualty. For someone you came to this church tonight full of yourself, full of your abilities, full of your accolades, business exploits, I congratulate you for that. But in the presence of pride, you will not go far. You will not go far. When people list their crowns and clap, sometimes I'm tempted to intercede for them and say, God, show mercy. And you see, this pride sometimes comes because of our backgrounds. We come from families. It's, it's, um, it's, it's, there is a psychology to pride. When you come from a background of deprivation, where you never have the opportunity to experience life at a certain level, if you now break through that barrier, there is the tendency to want to to have a revenge mission. I need to show people I'm now richer. I need to show people I'm now more anointed. Someone bow your head in one minute and cry and say, Lord, this cancer of pride, take it away from my life. Go ahead and pray. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Show me mercy, King of kings and Lord of lords. Take away pride, ministerial pride, business pride. Take it away from my life. The pride of life, arrogance in any expression. Take it away. Let it not be that when I build houses, I say my power and the might of my hand has gotten me this. He said, but thou shalt remember the Lord your God. Someone pray, even if you're a prodigal son, a prodigal daughter, a prodigal father, a prodigal businessman, a prodigal man of God, you can start from that point. Go ahead and pray. 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 Take a minute to pray. I repent from pride. I repent from pride. A life of boasting and pride. I repent from it. If I'm, I'm lifted, it's because of your mercy. If I'm anointed, it's because of your mercy. Someone pray. If I'm helped by God, it's because of your mercy. If I have anything that is worth clapping for, it's because of your mercy. Koinonia, a product of your mercy. Intellect, a product of your mercy. Help, a product of your mercy. Go ahead, pray. Zaria, pray. Those connecting online, pray. I repent from pride. I repent from vainglory. Except the Lord builds a house. They labor in vain that build it. 
except the Lord watches over his city. The watchman watcheth but in vain. It is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow. But he gives his beloved sleep. You came for a miracle service. God is taking away from you like a, a surgery happening to your life. These are the cancers, the viruses that are stopping you from making progress. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Jiadu wata banda wani se kai meira hama kawa ye. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Let the merciful one visit you tonight. Show you mercy. ordinary results you see in the life of ordinary men these are the forces that are at work I can easily pray for you it does not take so much to cast out demons it is not even the ability of the man of God it does not take so much to minister healing but these are the weightier matters keeping your destiny down it's not enough to heal you the, the what is depressing you that even needs you being healed from depression is what I'm solving hallelujah many believers are not sick many believers are not necessarily oppressed but there are people who come in and out of church and shout amen and fall down and rise up and they don't move forward the Lord placed it upon my heart tonight I came in the spirit of a surgeon and what what God is doing to many people is taking you to the theater and opening you up removing some things and fixing other things that by the time you are out of this spiritual anesthesia, you will find out that the pain is no longer gone. That the pain is no longer there. You are, you are completely recovered. You are, you are healed. You will find out that the backwardness was as a result of a mindset. And that there are certain traits. Laziness. Destroyed many. Dishonor. Destroyed many. Pride. Destroyed many. Unforgiveness destroyed many okay strings is not here okay David Dam or anybody I want to sing this Rahama song for me if there's no guitar anybody Sam just sing it for me it's one of his songs I just sense that there's an anointing on the song. you sing it for me one time
listen I will keep saying it for as long as I have your ears to hear it and for as long as I'm alive to say it this is one of my covenants with God that if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you this is what God told me many years ago if you will let men see me if you learn how to hide behind the cross and allow men see me you have a choice you can direct them to yourself and be the superstar and be the celebrity and be the center of attraction but the consequences that follow such a choice you must be willing to go with it but if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you I'm about to pray for you if we stop here tonight this was a great miracle service you may not understand the surgery you are going to list these five things I'm the one who will give you the prayer request I whether you want to lie down whether you want to cry for the next two or three minutes I'm going to be listing these five traits where you have any of them missing in your life please swallow your pride and cry before the God of heaven the first is gratitude the second is honor the third is diligence the fourth is forgiveness the fifth is humility which of this is not working in your life koinonia cry tonight go ahead cry before the God of heaven cast your golden crown Shama sana seleke pereke tabaraka tosiata. Kebrate saliga barantos yata. I repent from ingratitude. Someone is praying. Cry unto God, the merciful one. Repent from ingratitude. Repent from dishonor. Dishonor in ministry. Dishonor in destiny. Repent from laziness. It's time to embrace diligence. Someone pray. Cast away this cancer of unforgiveness. Is blood is brought high blood pressure. Now you have a BP problem because of unforgiveness. Pray finally the grace for humility. I tell you, pride is a destroyer. Pride is a cancer. It eats up the health of your days, the health of your destiny. Take a minute to pray. Outside, make sure you are praying. All the overflows, pray. Connecting across the globe, pray. Whether you are in your home, this explains the tragedies that have come upon your life. Maybe in the last few months, in the last years, it cannot be unconnected to the absence of these things. One more minute, you're praying. He that honors me, I will honor. He that despises me, I will lightly esteem. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see that tonight, the miracle service is from inside out. It's not just shouting amen. 
there is an inner work of the spirit that he's doing god is diagnosing the conditions of many people he's showing you that it's not about shouting amen no it's like a patient that has cancer and you are giving him panadol the panadol can stop the headache but the patient will be dying father in the name of jesus you have impressed this upon my spirit and I brought this word to your people. Tonight, for the tens of thousands following across the globe and the many who are here and those who are connected, in the name of Jesus I pray that these cancers that have latched onto our spirits, latched onto our souls, scheduling seasons of pain and recycling the same. I pray in the name of Jesus that they drop dead tonight. Yeah. Unforgiveness drops dead tonight. Yeah. Laziness drops dead tonight. Yeah. Lack of diligence drops dead tonight. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything to be corrected may it be corrected. Everything to be pruned may it be pruned in the name of Jesus Christ. Now lay your hands where you are trusting God for a miracle. We'll just flow from here to the healing anointing. You may rise, please, if you can. I want you to lay your hands there. We'll ride upon the wings of this cleansing. And I want to pray healing for someone. Lay your hands, whether it's your chest, lay your hands there. If it's your head, lay your hands there. Believe in. Remember, I told you there is a mindset that partners with the anointing. There is a mindset that partners with infirmity. If you believe, I was so humbled by the testimony of the gentleman who didn't have the ability to smell. You can imagine that if something is born, he does not even know. That's dangerous. And yet, believe in. A miracle happened. Even though it did not happen at the miracle service where he attended, he would have been discouraged. But he held on to his faith and true to God's word. He woke up after an encounter and that's it up until today. Tonight may be your chance. Don't trivialize the anointing of the spirit. Lay your hands. Don't keep pampering the high blood pressure. Don't keep pampering the headache. Don't keep pampering the failure in your organs. If you keep partnering with it using a defeated, unbelieving mindset, it doesn't matter what kind of prayer comes. You will remain in that situation. But give God a chance to bring his power to your life. Go ahead. Lay your hands. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Salim ala subra haskebeleka parati abada. He's called Rafa, the one who heals. And for those who are connecting from any hospital, the Spirit of God is ministering healing right now. Those who are connecting by way of internet, by way of television, you have someone who is sick, even if it's a terminal situation, believe God for a miracle right now. Already the Lord is showing me someone, I'm watching you, I don't know if you are here, but I'm watching you, you are sitting on a wheelchair. The right part of your leg seems to be damaged as a result of arthritis. This is arthritis, has completely destroyed the right part of your legs. But in the name of Jesus, whether you are here or you're online, I declare let power surge through that body now. Let the power of the Holy Spirit surge through that body now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's someone you have glaucoma glaucoma the right side of your eye in the name of jesus christ by the power that raised christ from the dead i declare be healed now Amen. be healed now Amen. be healed now Amen. now there's a lady the right part of your breast is growing unusually like something that is cancerous growing unusually it's like something that is cancerous the power of God is about to touch you wherever you are and the Lord is bringing you healing so that that thing does not kill you. We speak to you, you will not die. In the name of Jesus. Now I pray for you. 
every spirit that is back of any infirmity i want to minister to the sick first and then we'll speak deliverance in the name of jesus anyone those outside the overflow outside all who are in the overflows down to the basement those who are here zaria connecting us canada uk all our expressions in the name of jesus i decree and declare that the spirit that is back of any infirmity i curse you from the bodies of god's people in jesus name i curse you from the bodies of god's people in jesus name i curse you from the bodies of god's people in jesus name now i decree and declare be healed in jesus name supernaturally healed in jesus name be healed in jesus name i'm receiving the ministration in my spirit now don't feel embarrassed anyone who has a blood disease blood disease please step forward blood disease leukemia blood disease any kind of blood disease verified please step forward quickly i want to pray for you this is what the holy spirit make sure you understand what i'm saying don't come out carelessly blood disease blood disease only blood disease come very quickly let them come please quickly quickly we have to hurry up the blood disease come we're still praying blood disease it will not kill you SS genotype you have the faith join them let the devil let that that cancer be damaged from your life once and for all blood disease the Lord is speaking to me I want to minister to such people right now you see how many people are trusting God for a miracle because there are spirits that are behind this something is living there is such an anointing here blood disease the life of the flesh is in the blood there are spirits responsible for this help that man my sister I'm seeing something like a rope. That lady you are holding. I curse that spirit now. Let her go. The name of Jesus. I'm about to pray for you. I don't care what it's called. This is a miracle service. You're about to experience the power that raised Christ from the dead. Blood disease. Blood disease. Blood disease. There is still somebody outside, the overflow outside, blood disease. Hallelujah. The Lord is ministering to me. There is a lady, you started having a reaction in your body. This is blood related, but it happened after you were transfused, like blood transfusion. From that time, your body was not normal again. After the transfusion, I'm going to be praying for all of you here. We are still praying and ministering to the sick. You see, please look at me. I want everyone looking at me here to believe for you or whoever you are standing in for that you don't have to remain with that condition. Remember what I taught you. There is a belief system. These things are spirits. You believe me on that. I don't care what the medical name is. They are spirits. I want to pray for you. Place your hand on your chest. Let me speak over you now. The same power that ability that raised Christ from the dead I want to cause those spirits and that you are able to walk in liberty afterwards father you have anointed us to be extensions of your power these ones have come because of blood diseases and blood related issues right now I decree and declare every spirit that is responsible for these blood conditions out of them now out of them now out of them now I declare be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name if it's a genotype issue we change it now we change it now help that lady we change it now we change it now SS genotype we change it now 
by the power that raised Christ from the dead. We change it now. Recurrent crisis going to the hospital. We change it now. Every organ failure that is blood related be healed now. High blood pressure be healed now. I say it again, high blood pressure, my God, be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. Help that lady, leukemia, be healed now. Anyone having blood cancer, whether you are following online, you are in a hospital or you are right here, I declare be healed now. No matter what it is called, be healed now. I'm hearing in my spirit, liver problem, liver problem. Someone came to church with a liver problem. The power of God is touching you right now. Liver problem, be healed now. You will not die in the name of Jesus. I say to you by the voice of prophecy, you will not die in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, this is something that we minister to often here, but the Lord is showing me again. You have low blood pressure, and this is because you keep losing blood. You're a woman. You keep losing blood, whether it's your circle or not. This thing has, I mean, you literally can lose blood in a way that you almost begin to feel dizzy. It's a demonic attack. I curse that spirit now. I curse that spirit now. I curse, help that lady. I curse that spirit now. Now hear me. Every legal access the devil has over this sickness and this infirmity because you have come out here for those who are here and those who are connecting around the congregation in the name of Jesus that access is broken by the blood 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 we overcame them the Bible says by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony I say it again, that access is broken by the blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Please return to your seats rejoicing very quickly. Let's celebrate them as they go. Return to your seats rejoicing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, I want to pray, please listen carefully. I want to pray particularly for people who have any kind of organ failure listen any kind of organ failure heart uh, what are the organs in the human body again any organ failure please make your way quickly I, I sense a very strong anointing let's hurry up organ failure or if you are standing for someone maybe you have their photo when when the power of God comes like this make sure you receive don't wait and say you will see me after the service. That's not how it works. When the anointing comes, you strike when the iron is hot. Organ failure. They diagnose you of kidney, liver, heart problem. Maybe they say your heart is being enlarged. Please leave your seat and come. God wants to heal you now. Anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the Atmosphere. Oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary. Keep coming, let's make it quick. And whether you are coming or not, please make sure you are praying. Don't stand carelessly and you are watching. Connect also. And for those online, if there's someone close to you, maybe confined, a, a, a bed, wheelchair, something with some organ failure, there is a grace for creative miracles here right now. And I want you to release your faith. I want to pray for you. Look how many people standing for themselves or their loved ones. Whilst you're standing, please begin to pray. It's time to pick my new kidney. It's time to pick a new liver, a new 
uh, whatever, enlarged heart. They told you already your heart is enlarged. Reject that, 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 that demonic report. Take a minute to pray. Ah, the healing power of Jesus is about to rest upon you. I am serving a living God. His name is Jesus Christ. He died and rose and gave me victory. I have faith. One more time, sing it from the depth of your heart. I am look at me look at me if God can bring life to bones that were very dry he brought bones to be joined to its bone Ezekiel 37 and life came to it again then I want you to know that God can correct your organs you have nothing to lose believing Jesus some of you they told you your kidney is already damaged some of you, they told you your heart is enlarged. Damaged organs, maybe prostate, cancer, stage, whatever, final stage. I want you to believe. There are spirits behind this thing and you are about to see it now. I want to pray for you. It is not just a medical condition. It is a demonic condition. I want to pray for you. Place your hand on your chest. And perhaps you could not make it here, but you know someone who is about dying because of organ failure. Please stand for them while we are praying. Let's believe God for a creative miracle right now. Let me curse the spirits. Organ failure. Father, I stretch my hands over your people. You have brought them out here by yourself. Anyone here under the sound of my voice who is under the influence of the spirits of ancestry, they have programmed themselves to plague you like grandfather died like father died you have seen some of those loved ones in your dream please help them i decree and declare let them go now i cast that spirit i cast that spirit right now i cast that spirit right now i cast that spirit right now spirits of inheritance let god's people go now in the name of jesus christ now I declare over every failed organ, let there be a creative miracle now. A creative miracle now. A brand new heart now. Brand new kidneys now. Brand new liver now. In the name of Jesus. Help that lady. There's a miracle happening here. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, what I'm seeing is fire. This is just what I'm seeing in my vision. Like fire dropping on people. But this is not an impartation. This is like a refiner's fire. Purifying and taking away this dross from your body. In the name of Jesus, by this ministry of fire, every organ that is failed, every organ that is dying, every organ that is cancerous, every organ that is deteriorating, receive life right now in Jesus' name. Receive life right now in Jesus' name. Receive life right now in Jesus' name. I decree and declare you will not die. You will not die. God is showing me someone. There's something they call bone cancer. That means your bone is getting softened and I don't know, the con but something is dying in your bones. In the name of Jesus Christ, may God come for the rescue for you. In the name of Jesus, 
that everyone who has come here, you will return with your testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please return back to your seat rejoicing. Return back to your seat rejoicing. Return back to your seat rejoicing. Let's celebrate them as they go. Return back to your seat rejoicing. Alina sofre kebalaku sabregedima landu sikata. Krite sila kaparunde shele kepriata. You don't have to come out, but if there is any growth in your body, breast lump, fibroid, whatever it is, you know there is a growth, noticeable growth. Please lay your hands there. I want to pray for you now. Please lay your hands. Lay your hands. I'm just, I'm just walking with what the Spirit of God is doing. Lay your hands. Please lay your hands. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Sing it one more time. to pray for you any kind of growth at all fibroids lumps any sort of growth in your body in the name of Jesus Christ I stretch my hands right now and I declare from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet every growth that has found its way in your body growing and inconveniencing you damaging your organs and your body by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I command those growths to disappear now. I command those growths to disappear now. I say it again, growths disappear now. In the name of Jesus Christ, growths disappear now. Disappear now. Disappear now. In the name of Jesus. Now keep your hands there. Whether I minister directly to your case or not. Now lay your hands very quickly because of time. I want to pray. No matter what the condition is. Keep your eyes on Jesus as I pray. Expect a miracle right now. Expect a miracle right now. Expect a miracle right now. Father, I decree and declare over your people online, across our various expressions, and here on site, as many who have come with any and all bodily infirmities, plagued by demon spirits, afflicted, sterling on their health, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the power that raised Jesus from the dead, let life surge to your body now. 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 In the name of Jesus, let life surge to your body now. Be healed in Jesus' name from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet be healed in Jesus name eye conditions be healed hearing problems be healed speech problems be healed autistic children be healed blindness be healed now all those who could not work pain bone conditions be healed in the name of Jesus you couldn't move any and all parts of your body. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Heart palpitations be healed. 
in the name of Jesus no matter what the medical name is in the name of Jesus I bring you life and healing I bring you life and wholeness in Jesus name I pray 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 now we're going to pray everyone please pray this very seriously this is part of the miracle service are you ready now say father shout it let it be with all your heart say father in this season I decree and declare that I'm going forward I'm making progress lift your voice and begin to pray decree and declare in this season someone is praying you came for a miracle service command your own progress in this season in this season I decree and declare I make progress I make progress by the power of the Holy Ghost progress spiritually someone is praying progress in business progress academically progress maritally someone open up your mouth and pray progress progress someone is praying in the name of Jesus in this season I make progress in ministry I make progress in this season I go forward every delay every stagnation against my life against my progress I come against you someone is praying a believer is praying I make progress I make progress I make progress hallelujah praise the name of the Lord in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray this is August the 8th month we are stepping into September the 9th month and the Bible says as soon as Zion travails she shall put forth her son is someone ready to pray shout it say father in the name of Jesus I decree and declare every vision every prophetic word that is still hanging over my destiny as I step into this month and September let it manifest open your mouth and pray let it manifest let it manifest every vision every prophetic word someone pray let it manifest great things that have been spoken concerning me let it manifest let it manifest the increase let it manifest someone you are praying breakthrough let it manifest open doors let it manifest let it manifest by the power of the Holy Ghost you are praying let it manifest Shakata Pakata Lakata let it manifest let it manifest someone pray my marital destiny let it manifest that pregnancy let it manifest the arrival of that anointing let it manifest the open doors let it manifest my prosperity let it manifest the ministry of destiny help us let it manifest as soon as Zion travails travail it in prayer let it manifest Let it manifest. Let it manifest. Let it manifest. In the name of Jesus, let it manifest. In Jesus' name we pray.
In Jesus' name we pray. How many of you are ready to rebuke the spirit of delay? You're going to shout this, let it be from the depth of your heart. That there are many things God has said should be by now. But there are spirits that have vowed that you will never see the faithfulness of God in that area. Now is the time to clear them out of the way. Are you ready to pray? Shout it, say, Father. Shout it again, say, Father. In the name of Jesus. Every delay over my life, over my destiny, by the blood of the eternal covenant, that delay is broken now. Open your mouth and pray. Broken now. Broken now. Delay. Broken now. Go ahead and pray. Delay. Broken now. Delay. Broken now. Delay. Mention every area of your life. Cause delay. Cause delay. Cause delay. Call it by name. Cause it by the blood of the Lamb. Shabakata balaka parakata. Krakata lanta kaparakata oskata brakata. Shabranta kaparakata balaka paruta salavatash. Take a minute and cause delay. There must be results in my life in this season. I cause delay. I cause delay in ministry. I cause delay in destiny. I cause delay over your children. Cause delay over your spouse, over your business. Sabalaka parada kata frast. Skada balanta kapa laka parata kata baratosiata. Delay. Delay. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. When it was time for Isaac to bless his sons, the blessing was to go to Esau. But because a secret that was in the heart of Isaac was made open, Rebekah had it. And when she had it, she called Jacob. She said, something that should come to your brother, I want it to come to you. And as if it were a joke, Eventually, Jacob received that blessing and Esau cried and said, is, is there nothing left? Let me tell you the truth. When matters leave the heart of God, you are not the only one who hears it. That God said, I want to bless you. It's not only you who hears it. The gates of hell, wickedness, powers, and everybody is also interested in that prophecy. What God told you is also of interest to demons is also of interest to wicked men but it is your own responsibility to war in the place of prayer and say that which is a portion for me it must never be diverted in this season that which is a portion for my destiny it will not be aborted in the spirit is someone ready to open your mouth and pray go ahead and pray that which god has declared concerning me it will not be diverted by wizardry it will not be diverted by powers manipulating the heavens i decree and declare that which has been spoken concerning me oh i will not make the mistake of Esau. i wore a good warfare with the prophecy i wore a good warfare my bishopric another will not take my bishopric another will not take Pray. Pray. Amalada balaga baraka tabras. Pray.
In Jesus name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Don't be tired of praying. You're partnering with God to produce victory. Now we're going to pray. We're going to call forth by faith the human agents who have been mandated to partner with prophecy so that it will be manifest in your life. You can call by faith. Remember, I have taught you because one man forgot, Joseph added two years in prison. So when God speaks, the manifestations of his word is not just mindset dependent. You have been taught here that it's also men dependent. We have dealt with the issue of mindset. Someone is going to pray. Shout it from the depth of your heart. Say, Father. Every human agent who must come into partnership with prophecy for my sake, I cry unto you, may they arise now. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Help us of the war. Open your mouth and pray. Endorse us. Open your mouth and pray. Don't be silent. Don't be careless. Declare by faith. Ordained by God to partner with your rising. Ordained by God to wipe the tears of shame from your eyes. Ordained by God to see to your lifting. Ordained by God. Every human agent, decree and declare, they rise for your sake. They come to the rescue for your sake. Every human agent mandated by God, anointed by God, the Father of Spirits, to show up in this ministry, to show up in my life, to show up in my destiny, bringing direction, enhancing my lifting. I call them forth by faith. I call them forth by faith. I call them forth by faith. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Two more prayer points. Don't be tired. You are returning with your testimonies for sure. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You still believe in speed? Hmm. Yes, sir. That in four months, God is still able to bring you acceleration. Who believes that? Shout it after me with all your heart. Say, Father, Father even, now, even now, I still believe for speed, for acceleration. Open your mouth and pray. Even now, even now, it is August, but I still believe for my company. It is August, but I still believe for speed in ministry, speed in my destiny. Shake away unbelief and pray. Speed. Someone pray. Speed in establishment. Speed in your finances. Lord, do in one month what has not been done in five years. Jehovah, do in one month what has not been done in five years. Do in one month what has not been done in five years. Bring speed to my destiny. Bring speed to my destiny. Go ahead and pray. Pray with faith. Speed to my destiny. Speed, speed, speed. Even now, I believe you for speed in ministry. Even now, I believe you for speed in destiny.
Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Mary cried and said, it's too late. The man is dead three days. He said, if you were here, Lazarus would not have died. But he said, even now, even now, huh, even now, it is August. I feel that we should still pray that prayer again. We should pray. I don't know. It may not be for everybody. Father, do in one month what has not been done in five years. Go ahead and pray. Do in one month in my life. Do in one month in the life of my spouse. Do in one month in the life of my children. Do in one month in the destiny of Nigeria. Do in one month in my business. God can bring speed. Speed in your finances. God can change the report in one month. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think it was, was it US or Canada now during the Sound of Revival conference? A lady gave a very touching testimony. I think for about 21 years, if I recall, she had been trusting God, something related to her papers or so. I hope I get the testimony right. 21 years, and just like that, in a moment. It is beautiful to see God move, but it is beautiful to see him move on time. On time, on time, even now. Let me speak to someone before we take the last prayer point. Everything that seems to be behind schedule in your life, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, if you have the faith to believe it, September will not meet you still desiring that miracle. I say to you, September will not meet you still desiring that miracle. I send a prophetic word, September, not, not September, will not meet you still desiring that miracle. September will only meet Thanksgiving. September will only meet Thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus Christ. For those of you who think every prophetic word is a joke, the Bible says despise not prophesying. I'm still saying it again. We still have a few days. I'm not saying the end of September. I'm saying September will not meet you still waiting for that miracle. Honestly, from the depth of my heart, if you believe, you will be surprised at what my God will do. September will only meet you dancing, only meet you rejoicing, only meet you jumping, as far as that matter is concerned. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what the situation is. Shortly we'll be praying over the request. You see, when you come to God, take away your pain for a moment. If not, it will disrupt what God is doing. And you will find out that you'll be hearing words that can change you. But something in you will be saying, is it true? Can God make a table in the wilderness? I know God moves, but can he step in for me that fast? It means you don't know God. In case you didn't have the faith to receive, I'm saying it again. That the remaining days left until August is complete. May that be the length of time left for your miracle to arrive. The remaining days left until August is complete. May that be the length of time left before you begin to testify. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the prophet said, by this time tomorrow. And a foolish man said, ah, will this happen? For some of you, the meaning of this is that divine direction like you have never seen from January till now, God will show you the real secrets for the results in the name of Jesus Christ. For some of you, God will raise men 
that while you are sleeping they are awake for your sake in the name of Jesus Christ let me give you the last prayer point very quickly we have to hurry up my God the last prayer point are you ready to pray now you're going to pray and I wrote this while I was praying as God was just telling me the things we'll be praying on. The final thing that I wrote here is we're going to pray. The spirits that take away joy. Listen, that when you receive a testimony, it doesn't seem to last. There is no longevity. Have you seen people like that? As soon as a breakthrough comes, they are even afraid because another news will soon follow. I don't know about you, but take the next two to three minutes. You are going to war in the spirit. Whatever the Lord doeth, it endures forever. Lord, I will not laugh today and cry tomorrow. I will not celebrate today and cry tomorrow. You will not start something and then leave me in shame. Someone open your mouth. Say, Father, bring your word to completion in my life and give it longevity in my life open your mouth and pray bring your word to completion everything you have begun bring your word to completion someone is praying bring your word to completion bring your word to completion and give it longevity let me not rejoice today and cry tomorrow let me not celebrate your blessing today and lose it tomorrow let me not celebrate promotion today and lose it tomorrow you don't lift men up and bring them down longevity of impact longevity of relevance hallelujah in Jesus name I don't have time that's why I'm not showing you all the scriptures my apology but the scripture connected to this will not quote it but I'll write it for you I would I would just just um, quote it the Bible tells us that after 10 plagues nine plagues when the tenth one came listen that Pharaoh released the people in a hurry they left such that their door could not even rise he said go 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 in and the Bible says as they left Pharaoh suddenly said no I won't give up on them even though they have gone he said get your army pursue them and bring them back so don't just say I have left Egypt there's still Pharaoh regretting that he left you and is on his way with a chariot are we together now but Miriam sang a song for us he said I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and its rider have been thrown into the sea we are still going to pray that prayer one more time that everything that represents Pharaoh still wanting to pull me back into my pain of yesterday wanting to, rec to bring back the shame of yesterday to have blessings and lose it to have joy and lose it to have sleep and lose it in the name of Jesus it is drowned forever open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray invest one more minute in prayer drown forever drown forever Drown forever. I have left Egypt. I will never return there as a slave again. I've been called to walk in liberty. I will never return there in shame again. been healed I will never go back to that sickness again the spirit that resurrects trouble resurrects pain resurrects shame resurrects disappointment I curse you over my life in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ very quickly please pass your prayer requests everybody Bring out your prayer requests. If you are yet to write it, overflows outside. Take a minute. Let me give you one minute while you are praying in the spirit. Please write your prayer requests very quickly. Zaria. And every other expression, those online, 
please pass it to the last person by the left or right to make it easier and begin to pray in the spirit be in this attitude of prayer you are praying seriously you must testify Go ahead and very quickly. Pass your request while you are praying. Don't be distracted. Finally, it is my turn to testify. I have a superior belief system that is anti-curses, anti-yokes, anti-divination. You are praying for yourself, praying for your children, praying for your spouse, praying for your ministry. Very quickly, let's have the prayer request. Ushers, let's make it fast. Very quick, very quick. Let's have it so that we can pray. Please make sure your prayer request gets here. If you are yet to submit, just wave it and an usher will see it. Wave it very quickly. Ushers, let's, let's be fast about that. Hallelujah. Let me give you one more prayer point. I just saw a vision now, and I want us to pray that prayer point. I just saw like blood dripping. I know what it means. We're going to pray one more prayer that every legal access Satan has over my life that is authorizing whether dreams, whether visions, whether repetition of patterns by the blood of the eternal covenant, I severe it from my life finally. Are you ready to pray? Say, Father, every legal hold that Satan has over my life, over my destiny, by the blood let it be broken now open your mouth and pray everyone break the legal hold for when the blood speaks there is no more authorization for darkness for when the blood speaks there is no authorization for witchcraft when the blood speaks it speaks mercy triumphing over judgment someone pray every legal hold Satan has over my life every legal hold Satan has over my destiny every legal hold over my children someone pray legal hold bringing patterns of sickness patterns of death patterns of failure patterns of setback patterns of delay patterns of shame Patterns of retrogression, patterns of going up and coming down, patterns of failure at the edge of breakthrough by the blood of the eternal covenant. Let it be broken now. Let it be broken now. Someone pray, let it be broken now in the name of Jesus. Let it be broken. In Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray we're about to pray over this but I want to pray a very special prayer now very quickly this prayer on the blood I want to make a decree we don't have time to bring all the people out but please anyone under the anointing ushers just, just help them I know you are multitasking but I want to pray there are people here who are victims of the legal hold of darkness and you know that they are victims of this because of repetitive patterns they will pray they will fast and yet you will see it happen again every time the, the devil does not seem to mind your spiritual activity is because he's standing 
based on a legal hold. You have to enforce that which is finished in Christ and engage the blood to command the experience of your victory. I want to pray for you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are people here under the sound of my voice. Inside, all the overflows. Outside, connecting online. You have seen these recurring patterns of death, of failure, of defeat, strange dreams, molestations as you sleep, all kinds of satanic manipulations. And you wake up, you see physical consequences of those things. Right now, I stretch my hands in the name that is above all names for everyone who came for this miracle service carrying any embargo that gives the devil legal access my god i feel fire burning on my hands i decree and declare right now that legal access be broken that legal access be broken be broken be broken be broken, be broken. Be broken in the name of Jesus. Be broken. Every ordinance of the fathers, covenants they entered with familiar spirits, covenants they entered with dark powers, and because you are part of their natural descent, it seems to be telling on you this night, whether you come from the north of Nigeria, the south of Nigeria, the east, the west, the middle belt, by the blood of the eternal covenant, those covenants are broken now. Broken now. Covenants of death, broken now. Covenants of failure, broken now. Covenants of setback, broken now. In the name of Jesus. Anybody who has said you will pay the price with your children and your children's children, I stand as an anointed servant of God and I decree and declare that pronouncement is broken over your life. I've shared it here in Koinonia. A young man who was always causing his mother pain. This is a story I know of many years ago. The mother cursed him and she said he will only stop stealing the day a rat stops stealing. That's what the mother told him. That for as long as you have the mouse, rat, stealing, that he will keep stealing. And truly, bring him out of the prison. He will go back again after a few days. Whatever is hanging on your head, as a result of the anger of someone, or mistakes you made, and people bowed unto God and cursed you, and said certain things that must follow you, I declare by the blood, that ill speaking is wiped off your head now. Wiped off your destiny now. Wiped off your head now. Wiped off your destiny now. I say it again, wiped off your head now. Wiped off your destiny now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where they said you would die, I declare leave. Where they have said you will go down, I declare you will keep rising higher. In the name of Jesus Christ. For shame, I declare receive double. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please stretch your hands over the prayer request and begin to pray in the spirit. Stretch your hands over the prayer request. Begin to pray in the spirit. Please stretch your hands over the prayer requests. Pray in the spirit. In one minute, you are praying in the spirit. You are praying in the spirit. If you are bringing it, bring it quickly, quickly, please. Go ahead and pray, believers. Stretch your hands and declare. As I've written it here, I'm picking up my testimony. One by one I wrote them. One by one I will record the testimony. Go ahead and pray. To the God of all flesh, the giver of every good thing. I have not written for shame. I have not written for embarrassment. I have not written just to write and write and write again. The growth required for answers, I contend for it. The prayers required for answers, I contend for it. The character traits required for answers, I contend for it. The prophetic word required for answers, I contend for it. The formula I must engage required for answers, I contend for it. 
go ahead and pray Shaleka peranda kebera kosadish Krapate na kapalede saliga barantos Saliga bernerketesh You are praying in the spirit You are praying in the spirit everyone I'm laying my hands by faith It is not a ritual We pray by faith believing That the God of all grace Is bringing testimonies The God of all grace Bringing testimonies the God of all grace changing stories by the power of the Holy Spirit wiping tears opening doors giving testimonies bringing deliverances in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says unto he that answers prayer shall all flesh come in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare over every one request written here may you stand on this altar to testify may you stand on this altar to testify one by one you wrote this request one by one you will testify in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for you from the depth of my heart all that it takes under God to see this request turn to answers may they happen for you if it is growth let it happen for you if it's the ministry of men may they come speedily if it's diligence let it come for you if it's wisdom you need to engage, may you receive the wisdom to engage. In the name of Jesus Christ, every demonic power fighting these answers, I decree and declare by the blood of the eternal covenant, they are banished and forbidden from influencing these answers in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, I call this request a harvest of answers. I call this request a harvest of answers for in Jesus name we pray 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 let me speak over someone in the mighty name that is above all names the name of Jesus I decree and declare where you have cried whether in secret or in open beginning from this night may the God of all grace visit you and turn your mourning to dancing and turn your sorrow to joy shout a believing amen I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ receive divine direction divine direction you will know where to go to you will know who to meet in the name of Jesus Christ the error that comes as a result of lack of direction may it not be found in your life in the name of Jesus I pray for you the grace to discern helpers when they show up may God open your eyes so that you will see and you can receive of your helpers in the name of Jesus hallelujah I was told of someone who left his house very sad story whether is it that he left his house going to the market and a car just rammed and he died and the family members did not even know that he died let me pray for you uh, I've had many of those stories but you know I just saw it by text and I was saying can you imagine that that people were calling who who has this dead body and they had to find a way of taking the dead body to the hospital that's not how the saints go the Bible says they who are in Christ sleep and those who sleep sleep at night when you sleep in the afternoon is called siesta. You are expected to wake up. Am I right? I pray for you. Every manifestation of death to cut short your life, either by accident, by activities of terrorists, by crashes, car crash, plane crash, because you have come for this miracle service, I place a mark of exemption upon your head. I place a mark of exemption upon your head. I place a mark of exemption upon your head. I declare live and not die live and not die as you travel live and not die in the name of Jesus Christ 
Number two, the Bible speaks about a man called Gamaliel. I found a scripture that blessed me. Acts chapter 5 and verse 34, NIV. A Pharisee called Gamaliel, the Bible says something notable about him and I want to speak it over your life. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, who was honored by all the people. Honored by who? So something can come upon a man that makes you honored not just by your people, but by all the people. I want to release that grace upon you. The grace that can make a man honored by all men, all the people, whether they are connected to you or not, in your place of work, I pray for you, like it happened to Gamaliel, may that grace for honor rest upon your life. You will be honored by your superiors, you will be honored by your contemporaries. You will be honored by your subordinates in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Let me speak recovery. When you have lost things, you don't need advancement. You need recovery first. Some of you have lost money. Some of you have lost connections. Some of you have lost favor. Some of you have lost many things. You have even lost the secrets that protect your grace. You have lost the secrets that protect your anointing. You've lost the secrets that protect your relevance. I pray for you in the name of Jesus tonight. Let there be a recovery. Let there be a recovery. Let there be restoration. I speak it to you. Receive restoration. Receive recovery. In the name of Jesus Christ. For many of us here, what has kept us down is ignorance. I shared some of them today to liberate you, but the journey must be ongoing. I pray for you. The right information needed in this season to bail you out of a life of ignorance and stagnancy. Access those materials. Access those information. Access those materials. Access those information in the name of Jesus Christ. My final prayer for you before I do the altar call. Final prayer. I will never stop this service be without praying the prayer of favor for you. I don't know how people live without it. I honestly do not know how people live without the favor of God. It's like living without oxygen. It's like living without the ability to talk, to walk, to hear, to feel. There are people like that in the hospital. When you find them, only their neck moves. They can't talk. They can't do anything. They are already blind, they can't hear. It's a terrible way to live. These are the kinds of states that makes you to prefer death than even to be alive. But I pray for you. Favor is a game changer in the life of men. Believe me, when it really rests upon you, genuinely rests upon you, it makes the difference. And it does so fast. I pray for you. Speaking in the area of your finances, speaking in the area of your relationships speaking in the area of progress and destiny receive favor receive favor notable favor notable favor as a deposit of god's grace upon your life let favor begin to speak let it speak immediately let it speak now let it speak tonight let it speak this week in the name of Jesus and it will not just speak once may it speak again and again and again may it speak again and again and again may it speak again and again and again in the name of Jesus Christ now let me pray for your spiritual life I should pray for your spiritual life some of you are not serious with God spiritually please look at me I'm not doing an altar call yet this is to everybody some of you are just not serious with God. It's an attack. Prayer life, zero. Word study life, occasionally. If you are fortunate and your hand can reach a devotional one morning, lucky for your spiritual life. Else, until the day attack gets serious. You need to standardize your spiritual life. You need to systematize your growth. You need to be more intentional. Let me speak over these three areas of your life. Your prayer life, your passion for the house of God and your word study life. Any one of these areas that has gone down or is failing already, by reason of this experience, this miracle service tonight, I declare let fresh fire return to your altar. 
the grace to pray, receive it. Passion for the house of God, receive it. The grace to study the word of God, receive it. The grace to live by the word, receive it. The grace to engage the word for your profit and receive it. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Now the altar call. Please all stand if you can. All stand. Let's minimize movement. Let me just address an issue. I know that we have to reach uh, after service. But please, I want to discourage the habit of just carelessly running out once we're about to make the altar call. Please don't discourage those who need to come to Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're patient for one more minute, it will not stop you. I know that you need to get vehicles, but let's discipline ourselves for that one time. The announcement and the altar call is important. Except it's an emergency, please do well to be patient and let us finish the service. It's honorable to start the service and finish. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. There's no point wasting your time and there's no point cajoling you. I'm going to count one to five. Please leave your seat very quickly. Others are waiting for your sake, so do not delay as you come. As I count one to five, please leave your seat and come very quickly. I need Jesus. I need him now. I need to make my ways right. God bless you as you come. Let's honor them as you come. Your bags, your Bible if you can, and everything you came to church with. Koinonia, let's encourage them. Encourage them. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Apostle, I remember being saved, but now I've backslidden. Join them. Join them. Join them. Restoration is possible in this kingdom. God is able to make your way right. Your relationship with Jesus can fall back in place. Let's honor them. Keep clapping. I count five and we're done. Two. Three. Those who are coming from outside, please make haste. Make haste very quickly. If you are not able to make it, then make do with the projector screens, your LEDs, your various locations. God bless you. Four. A final count and then we'll pray. Keep clapping, Koinonia. God bless you. Final count, five. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Can I request that you lift your right hand and say this after me as loud and as clear as you can? Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I declare that I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I'm a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Father, thank you so much for these precious ones. They have come declaring your lordship over their lives. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave, let it be broken over your life. The grace to walk in victory I impart upon you. From today, go from glory to glory and from grace to grace. In Jesus' name I pray. Please look to my right. That will be your left. There are counselors waving the placard. They are ready to receive you. Say a prayer. Um, over you and then you'll be back to your seat please let me encourage you to move to my right that will be your left you have a word and a prayer very quickly and you're back to your seat let's honor them very quickly koinonia honor them hallelujah now one a quick announcement and we're done in fact two please keep praying we're just days left for sound of revival uk and um, yes, it's a good place to clap. Hallelujah. Make sure you pray. Make sure you invite everyone, our UK family. Um, go ahead and let everyone know that Jesus Christ is coming again with a sound of revival. And it's going to be a time of the outpouring of the Spirit. And um, make sure that everyone does the work of an evangelist. And then make sure you give. Make sure you give. Uh, towards the conference do it generously do it with all your heart and the lord will bless you in the name of jesus kenya are you ready this week i am in nairobi kenya <laughs> hallelujah very beautiful place and um 
it's, it's the Rima Fest with a dear friend and brother, Pastor Julian Kula. It's going to be at the stadium, Kasarani Stadium, and um, it's, it's going to be an outpouring of the Spirit. So all of you in Kenya, my dear people in Kenya, all roads lead to your stadium. It's going to be uh, a supernatural experience from the 27th down to the 30th. Uh, I'm there Thursday and Friday, I think. But then all the days should be days of great experience. And so pray by Thursday I'm there. And Friday it will be a time of great glory. And um, I trust God that God will move mightily. So everyone across Kenya, I'm lending my voice with a dear friend and brother, uh, Reverend Julian, to announce that it's going to be an outpouring of the Spirit. So all over the north, south, east, and west of Kenya, please make your way to the stadium. And um, it's going to be a supernatural experience. For those of you who are coming outside of Kenya, I'm sure that there will be details there by the organizers to be able to guide your stay. And let's trust God for a great time. God is moving across Africa and it is victory for the entire African continent as we sing his praises and as we help men to know God, to receive his touch and to become more like him. We find this flame of revival. Those of us who are here, make sure you pray and then connect online. I'm sure that it will be streamed either live or as a rebroadcast on our social media platform. So look out for it, listen to the sermons, pray. But more importantly, remember that every time we travel, it is the whole global family that goes together. So it's not just Joshua Selman. We all go together in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I decree and declare that your week beginning is blessed. In the name of Jesus. Nothing will be too late in your life. I say it again, nothing will be too late in your life. The only thing that will be too late is trouble. The only thing that will be too late is shame. The only thing that will be too late is setback. But as for you, you will enjoy the goodness of God. Every day will be one testimony added upon another. In the name of Jesus Christ, I call you blessed and I call you victorious. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Together let's share the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Greet someone and tell them God bless you. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.